Graduated 100% uh, of our football team again. Uh, we've done that every year. Yeah. I wish I could take credit for that. That's not me. I, it, hell, it took me six years to graduate, you know. <laughs> but I got a strong PE degree out of it, you know. <laughs> oh, man. Anybody, don't show hands, anybody enjoy college as much as me? I don't know. But uh, we are graduating our kids, and we have ever since every year we've been here. Uh, you guys know we've had the most wins last year, and we had since 11. Uh, we finished ranked in the top 20 in the country. Um, we won the four trophies. Two of them were, did you have the Outback Bowl trophy too? Or? Uh, we had the boot, and we had we got the battle line, and and uh, and we got the Southwest Classic. You know what's amazing? I love you, but a long time. If it's forever, that's when the last time we had them all. Never, and we got them now. I tell you, you know, I went out to uh, practice with Burks, and I was going. You know, I was messing with him in stretch, and I go, you ain't even never seen the boat trophy. And he goes, oh, yeah, I have. I said, no, you haven't. He said, yeah, when I got recruited over at LSU, I saw it. <laughs> I go, man. But you know what we did? We made a big deal out of that. Because you know why? Because it is a big deal. And so we had, now I'm talking about before we got them. You know, we wanted, we wanted the, I guess the first one we had an opportunity to get is the Southwest Classic versus Texas A&M. And uh, we wanted that. We talked about it. It was a big deal to us. I mean, we talked about it. Some coaches don't. I say, why not? It's, it's, it, you're, it's a goal at the end of the week. It's a win. And what comes with the win is a, is a trophy. It's a big deal. You know what's a bigger deal? The feeling of you going and running and getting a trophy and the feeling that you have in a locker room after you get the trophy, that's more important than probably any of it. But at the end, David, at the end, we had the four Bs. So we had made a run. We had gotten to eighth, made a run, and uh, we lost three in a row there. And, and uh, at the end of the year, we were five and three, and, and uh, so we, made, we called it the four Bs. So we had the boot. Well, the first one was a bowl. So that's when we broke Larry out. And uh, so the first one was a bowl. Next one was the boot. The next one was Bama. And the next one was uh, the battle line trophy. So our kids all knew about the four Bs. I was sitting there talking about with Barry Odom. I was sitting back there talking to him. I said, you know, when you were at Missouri, you made runs through November. He, that's when his team was the best when he's at Missouri, and I said, we got to get some type of motivation that we can go, we can go win out and end up nine and three. We, unfortunately, we couldn't, we, you know, we got beat by Alabama, but, but went in the boot. And you know, the other thing too, I'm not a, I can't tell you what to do because I'm just, I'm trying to get by myself. But if you had set a goal and you reach it, you need to celebrate it, I believe. I mean, or don't set the goal. But if you, if you reach something in your life, have a hell of a time with it, you know? And that, like, I got a little bit of back on me with when we celebrated our sixth win against Mississippi State. Well, A, they were 17th in the country. They had a good team. B, we hadn't been in a bowl in a long time. And uh, <laughs> too long. And, and it was one of our goals. I didn't say it was the highest goal we had, one of our goals, and we're damn sure going to celebrate it when we reach our goals. And I'm going to tell you, y'all all, all would have been, been in there when Larry was rolling down that. It was fun. <laughs> you, you guys missed out on a hell of a party that day. It was a lot of fun now. And, uh, of course, now we got Larry's got his own little carrying case now. <laughs> We've, we're, we're upgrading with him. But... Uh, and then we went to, you know, we won the boot, and then we, or we went to LSU, and we were fortunate enough to win the boot. And then, so, you know, now we have one of the two uh, of your trophies, and, and, uh, and then we unfortunately couldn't beat Bama, but then we came back and, and won the, the battle line trophy against Missouri. So, 
we took a picture in our suits um, with the three trophies and on the way to the Outback Bowl. And we moved one of them so we could place the Outback Bowl championship trophy in there. And I told the kids, we took two pictures. One was with the three trophies. And I said, you'll never see this one. We're going to go win the Outback Bowl, and then we'll photobomb the, the trophy in there, you know. <laughs> and by golly, that's what we did. You know? Um, we got a good football team. We really do. I don't know what that means in wins and losses, but we have a, a good football team. We had three super seniors uh, coming back with Dalton Wagner, Bumper Pool, and Dorian Gerald. Now, if you want to know about Dorian Gerald, you'll have to ask Coach Nutt. He's so old, I think Houston <laughs> recruited him. I don't, I don't know how old the guy I think he's older than me. I don't know. <laughs> But he, he coming back for his seventh year, I think is what it is. And, uh, uh, but he's been hurt, you know, and things of that nature. But those three came back. Those are su three super seniors on our team. Uh, we've added nine guys out of the portal uh, on scholarship uh, that are going to help us. And I'll get to that in just two seconds. I know we, you and I need to talk, Baz, and do that. But um, on here, it talks about our three coordinators. That, when you, when you can keep that, what happens is you're not going back to terminology. You're not going back to who's this guy, I don't like this guy, all this. They know what they're going to get. And um, so we're able to keep our three coordinators and Scott and Kendall and Barry. And then we were able to keep our strength coach. All those things are important. So how do you keep them? Well, Number one way you keep them is financially. I mean, that's, you know, that's where the foundation and all that money that you guys do uh, uh, that helps us. Because without it, they go on down the road. Haven't you seen coaches do really well and then they lose two or three coordinators and two or three years later they're out on the street somewhere, you know, hopefully they can come back to, you know, Little Rock Touchdown Club, <laughs> maybe earn a few dollars, you know. By the way, I'm still free, Judy. Thank you. <laughs> I was free yes, last year, free this year. Uh, no, I'm teasing. Um, but anyway, that's a big deal. That's a big deal to, to uh, keep your – you want to keep the people in your building that are, can influence the most. In other words, your O, o coordinators, he talks to all offense, D coordinator, to all defense. Special teams talks to all of them. Strength coach talks to all of them. You want to keep the people that influence the most people. And uh, so we were able to do that. And then if you go down here uh, for this uh, schedule coming up, and then Dave will ask the questions, uh, it's the third year in a row that we've won the trophy. You need to make one, because hell, we seem to win it every year for the hardest schedule in football. <laughs> Somebody's been trying to fire me ever since I got here. But we're, we're hanging tough, you know. But you know, we have all 12 of our opponents Played in the postseason last year. Um, our two non-conference opponents are in the top 25. BYU is 21 and four over the last two years with 20 starters coming, and they're coming. Oh no, we're going out there to play them. Mm. And then uh, we play Cincinnati, but they're just not. Oh, they were in the college football playoffs last year. So. It is what it is, and you know, we're the University of Arkansas. Hell, we're supposed to play teams like that. And uh, um, so we're, we're not, we don't look at it as a 12 game season. We just look at it who's next, you know. And, and uh, if you do it any other way, it could either get scary or it could get complicated. And we'll just leave it like it is. Um, our crossover games this year are South Carolina and Missouri. Um, somebody might ask me about. The, the pods, there's a pod and six, there's a pod and six and a pod and, and, a, and a single and seven. Uh, I think both of the, um, the way that they're trying to do our schedule in the SEC, I think it's outstanding because either one of those models where you have three permanents and six away or one permanent and seven away, either one of those models is gonna allow a home and home with every team in the SEC and I think that's really what the fans want to see. I think they want to see us play Tennessee here and go to Tennessee or play Florida here and, you know, I think, uh, or play Vanderbilt or whoever it may be. 
Um, I think you, the fans want to see us play everybody every year. And, and uh, over a four-year, uh, so a young man comes in, his, by the time he becomes a senior, he's going to be able to see uh, and play every opponent uh, twice. And so I think either one of those models uh, would be great. Um, right now it's not broke for our conference where you're playing eight games, so I'm assuming that that would be where they start. Uh, I don't know that, but that's what I assume. If that was that way, then our permanent crossover would be Missouri. And so um, I think this is, is that, and I've said it before, but we're trying to be loyal to the state. We're trying to be loyal to each other. I want you guys, when you go to the game, I want you to see a tough football team. Um, I want you to see one that's hard, hard working. I, w I want you to see that. I think that's what our great state is, but that's what we want to see. Uh, we want to show you uh, that we're proud to be a part of the state and that we're re we know we represent the state and, and uh, we want to be tough. And not only tough physically, we want to be tough minded. I think they go hand in hand. I think they have to be. And uh, our team's pretty strong. I mean, they're pretty tough. They're, they're loyal to the state. They love the state of Arkansas. It's easy to because of the people of Arkansas. Um, you know, I, I said it in the SEC media day, but uh, in my office it says you're not coming to play for the University of Arkansas. You're coming to play for the state of Arkansas. And that's about as true a statement as you can get. And we feel it. You know, since I've been here, uh, we're up over 14,000 uh, per game. Uh, home home attendance. It's second in the in the in the world, second in the nation. Uh, how our fans have come out in the last uh, from 19 to 21, and we appreciate. It. We need the home field advantage. We need you to score points for us, and uh, we believe that you do, uh, and we appreciate everything you do. MS. You ever, Dave? You ever, guys? Any of you? You ever been to a? And there's some incredibly strong and physical and, and small towns. I came from a small town, and I wasn't strong and physical, but I mean, I still came from a small town. But have you ever noticed that I'm the strongest guy in the 12th grade at this small school? And, but I, I transfer mid-year, and I transfer over to some big school, and I'm middle-of-the-road strength-wise. I think sometimes you have to see it. I think you have to see it. I, you can talk about it, but you have to, I think sometimes you have to see it done before you really start believing it. In other words, this kid over here that's stronger and strong in this, in this small town or, or wherever he's at, and he moves this big one, he'd never seen anybody like he got ready to see. It's the same way with our team. We'd never been a while of any of those kids on our team had never, in all honesty, had never seen any type of success on the field. None. None of them. Hadn't seen a bowl. Hadn't seen a winning season. Any of that stuff. So the confidence comes from what we've seen. We've seen that we can go into LSU and win. We've seen we can go into Jerry's world and, and beat A&M. We've seen that Tech, the University of Texas can come in here we can beat them. Those things help that confidence. And then if you continue to do what you've been doing, and you now I can see the results, and I know what my work is going to do for me, I think you can go wherever, you, wherever you're capable. I think you can reach your capabilities at that point. Talk about the transfer portal. You know, you lose last year, you lose the heart and soul of your team, Grant Morgan, who was, was the epitome of fighting Razorbacks, and you pick up a former five-star from Alabama. Then you lose a first-round draft choice in Traylon Burks, and you pick up Hazelwood from Oklahoma, who now you're seeing now in practice sounds like this is what you expected. Just amazing how college football has changed and th the impact of those two, losing two great players, but also picking up two great players that quick. Yeah, you know, um, it takes everybody a little bit. It's like when you go to your new job. It takes you a little bit to kind of get comfortable, right? And it might take you the end of the week to learn the week. It might take you the end of the month to figure out what a month is like. And to be honest with you, it takes a full year to figure out when you get Christmas vacation. When you, you, you know, you're, you're uncomfortable for an entire year if you take a new job. It's the same way with the kids. They, it, they're uncomfortable for a while with Hazelwood. Hazelwood wasn't half, 
he wasn't close to the receiver he is right now last semester. He's still looking around, trying to figure everything out, playing a half step slow, didn't know his teammates, those type of things. If you're going to go in the portal, I think it's so important that you do it in January. I've always believed if you go in for a junior college player, you go in in January because it takes those guys at least six months to get acclimated, you know, get acclimated to what the program's about. So uh, with Drew Sanders, he's done a great job. Uh, you're, Matt Landers, you're going to know about now. He's 6'5 and can fly at wide receiver. And Warren, Tom, I'm the most improved group of guys we've had to nine practices is our wide receivers. Uh, last year we were here, I think one of the question marks for, for most fans and media was quarterback position. Yeah. Not a question mark anymore. Let's talk about KJ and his progression from last year. I mean, KJ's the man. I mean, he, y'all like him? I do. <laughs> <laughs> But he's a leader. I mean, he hadn't always been that because, you know, he's just trying to earn his, earn his stripes, you know, out there. But, um, I mean, he's so accurate with the ball right now, so confident, uh, lost some weight. Uh, the other day I, I popped him in the gut, and he said, oh, you hurt your hands, you know. <laughs> and, you know, when you get older, you say stuff, and then you, when you say it, you look at them, they go, they have no idea who you're talking about, you know. <laughs> so I popped in, and I said, who do you think, you're Fabio or somebody? And he go. <laughs> so after, after practice, I sent him a picture of Fabio. I said, that, you know. <laughs> coach, but, your calling card for uh, many years in, in this league or as a coach on the offensive line was just big offensive line powerful. Obviously, you guys led the SEC in rushing. It was, was number one in power five rushing. And you got everybody back, and they're bigger this year. Yeah. You know, Luke Jones is really – he, he he's, in, he's come in there and done a great job. You know, again, anytime you don't talk about an offensive lineman, that means he's playing really good. You know, and, and uh, Luke, Luke has stepped into that group. Tykeese Crawford's another guy that's playing really well. Devin Manuel. Uh, Cody Kennedy is, in my opinion, the best offensive line coach in the country. And, and uh, some of the teams that offered him jobs this past year would tell you that uh, I'm not the only one that thinks he's a, a great offensive line coach. But he elected to stay here, as you know, as KB did. And several guys, Barry, you know, the guys that had opportunities to leave. But uh, I'm really pleased with that line. They're a non-content. I mean, they, they're a hard-working group. They know they got – you know, they didn't win the Joe Moore, so they need to go try to do that. I think that's a big deal for them in that room. I think they got to the semifinals last year, but uh, really good group of kids that work extremely hard. I played against some pretty good running backs in my day. I've said quite a bit here. Uh, the, uh, but you got a stable full of them up there. you yeah. got, you got three or four really, really good ones. All can, can – obviously did something that hadn't been done since 1975. Last year you had four backs, including KJ, with over 500 yards rushing. And uh, it's an impressive group again this year. Yeah, you know, Rocket Sanders is a guy that's, you know, the first guy in study table. I mean, he's a, he's a great kid. He's 230 pounds, big old good-looking guy. Uh, but you have Rocket, and then you got A.J. Green, who, you know, ran 10-3 in high school, big kid. And, and uh, for you guys that don't know that, it's really fast. <laughs> that wasn't at 40. That was 100. <laughs> and, and I didn't know it. I threw the shot. I mean, <laughs> um, and then uh, Dominic Johnson is one we got to get back. I mean, Dom Dominique was, was one of our best – Rushers last year, he had an injury in the bowl game. I think we'll get him uh, back. And then Rashad DeBinion is a guy from Cedar Grove that you guys will know about. He's a really good football player. So we're, we're, we're stacked up pretty good at running back. Last couple questions. Uh, first, the, uh, you open up with Cincinnati. You know, really, typically for Razorback football, in, back in my day, I remember, remember you didn't have, we didn't open up with a lot of teams who were ranked. Yeah. You know, you see a little bit more of that now, but Arkansas has not done that as much. This year, a lot of the players we've talked to, Bumper and all of them, they're excited that you have a ranked team, number one, 
your first game because it gets you you have to be focused you can't sort of walk through and mm. talk about starting with Cincinnati and how it helps your approach for game one well I think it I think I think you just said it I think I think it helps you in the off season. I mean you're getting ready for you know a top 25 team uh, when they come in here we have a lot of respect for Cincinnati I you know I lost a award when Luke Fick, Fickle won it you know that's kind of a bad deal they walked us all out at the same time. And then I no longer got on my ex. There was five of us. And I got to my ex and they said, Luke, they started showing his highlights. So I'm like, what am I doing? Then I walked behind the stage and had to walk back and I was the keynote speaker. It made no sense. He should have been, right? I mean, he, he won. But anyway, he's really a good coach. Um, and he did something nobody, they've never done. Nobody's ever done it before. They took a non-Power 5 team to the playoffs. Uh, but I got to know him. I have a, certainly a lot of respect for him and, and uh, their team. They just – a lot like us, I think. They just – they play hard now. They, they're – in their mind, they're a disrespected football team. And uh, they play hard and it shows. So it's going to be a, a really, really physical and, and uh, hard game for us. Last one. Uh, you're number three. Here you are. Is, uh, is this in your mind where you want to be year three? This is where you've got the program. A lot of people are excited. I mean, it's been a while since the Razorback program has been this hot. Obviously, look at the crowd today. Uh, is, is this exactly sort of on the timeline you had the, the program when you imagined it, when you started? I, th I think in all seriousness, I think, I think the goal was, was um, to make the state of Arkansas proud of the team. And I I don't really know what that is in wins and losses. You know, I, I really don't. Uh, I want guys on Sunday morning to go, hey, you see the hogs, and, and, and have something to brag about. And uh, so I don't know uh, what that means. I know this, that it seemed to me like we won a whole lot of games fast, you know. And so then when you do that, the expectation kind of – uh, goes up as well. We understand that, but you guys understand now that you play 12. So if you to get to 10, 11, 12, you can't lose hardly. If you win 12, you can't win, lose any of them. So you know, you, you get it. When you win five and you win six, you won one more. But if you win nine, there's not a whole lot. It just goes to 10, 11, and 12. You know, so. You might keep that in mind one of these days. Hopefully not this year, but one of these days. But, uh, no, I, we want to win. I mean, we want to win the West. We want to win the, the whole thing. We want to win the Natty. We want to win all of it. Uh, but – and we're at Arkansas. We should have that opportunity to do that. And uh, – but it's going to take, you know, a little bit of time. I think right where we're at after year two, I think – I think the kids should be pleased with what they did.